Hey y'all, I haven't done a musical show in a long time. Got pianos everywhere, behind me, here, over there, okay? This right here, I even put on a shirt for y'all. When I was coming up, it was the wicked shall cease from troubling. Traditional, it was something we all can get with with all ages, <laughs> right? And you at church, you hear you hearing, can't nobody do me like Jesus, can't nobody do me like no, can't nobody do me like Jesus, ain't my friend. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, that's what we were coming up in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. This was the sound of the church. This is all we knew. Winans came out with this beautiful song. Question this. Will I ever leave you? The answer is no. The Commodores, prior to that, did something to sound like the church. So instead of them sounding like a R&B group trying to sound like the church, they took an R&B group, a soul group, and sounded like the church, was using the church sound and everything. Father, help your children. just like church and the gospel the the stations didn't really want to play it because it was too tied on to connected on to Lionel Richie and them Commodore boys they're like mm -mm, it sounds good it's pulling us in because it sound like us so Twinkie Clock decided to take a little ditty from Stevie Wonder Master Blaster <laughs> Because in order for us to cross over, we got to give we have to give them the sound that they're looking for. You brought the sun. Okay, it was cute, and unfortunately, a couple of the gospel stations here in Chicago, Milton Bronson after they kind of remade the song, Bronson decided not to play it. Why? Because they were putting echoes and reverbs on the song and it was, they was mixing the sound. And I was listening to w, mm, WXFM, Elmwood Park, Chicago here. And this was in the, uh, this was when they came out with it, what, 1979, 1980, all right? I'm listening to it, and Milton Bronson said, we cannot, we cannot play this song. I can't understand why the industry do this to these girls, these sweet, innocent girls, that they would take a song like that and taint it and put all of this garbage in it. Into, I'm so tired of the world messing with gospel music. This was Milton Bronson of the Thompson Community Singles. He formed that in the 50s. He was saying that in 1980. I was a young man listening to it live. I don't even think I was in high school yet. Okay, yeah, I was. I just got to high school. I was like, wow, you're right, Milton, you're right. One hour in the radio program, he came back on the air and said, I just got a call from the label 
or from the powers that be, and they said it was the Clark sisters who insisted on that version. He said, I apologize. I didn't realize that the Clark sisters, in a sense, had stooped so low. <laughs> I'm trying to tell y'all. Huh? Clarissa, you, you ain't got no sound? No, we, I got sound. You ain't got no sound. I'm sorry you ain't got no sound. I got sound. And then uh, <laughs> came, uh, as as we start going into the choir songs and, you know, the thank God for uh, this, uh, the commission. I knew the words. It's been a long time. The commission came along and gave us a sound that was uh, 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 crossover, yes, but it still was palatable. <laughs> you understand? It was it was palatable, and the lyric form was chasing after God. We loved it. As you continue to go on in that music, uh, then came the CCM influence over the black church through what's called praise and worship. And then that's how we get power. What that did, it kind of dumbed up the musicians. <laughs> the musicians were used to a verse, uh, 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 an opening, a prelude, an, or, uh, an, august, an overture at the beginning, an interlude, you know, a sp special, <laughs> what we would call a vamp. It, it challenged the musicians, all right, a whining song, a commission song, what have you. Praise and worship didn't challenge the musician. It still don't today. So we got to try to be cr as creative as possible, but it's still a circle. You start with the six. Four. One. Five. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and around that, that foundational structure, you got to put a whole lot of stuff in it to make it creative. That's what gospel music is today and what it has come from. But this song I want to focus on because it's saying there's power in the name of Jesus. Ye yes. Uh, uh. Bass. Get you thinking, and where the topics are hot, feel free to comment whether we agree or not. Cause he's got something to say, Sir Walter Jones. Sir Walter Jones, he's got something to say, Sir Walter Jones. Sir Walter Jones, show. Come on in. The water's fine. Yeah. Oh. Do I Hello everybody, so what so the John Show. I'm here. It is a evening edition. Baby. Come on in, the water's fine, water's fine. How y'all is? You're doing fine? Good, good, good. I wore the shirt today for you because it's a music show and, you know, musicians, it's okay. You who are in music to be different. I wore the shirt. 
because I'm different. Music people are not always understood. We are just strange. We are really weird folks. So I'm not going to bash you all at the Stella Awards. It's okay to be different, but how different are you going to be? Because we were dif different and decent at the same time. So I want to talk about the Stella Awards, and I want to talk about the difference between ministry and industry, and I'm going to talk about the same old thing that I've been talking about for the past 10, 15 years on the So Walter Jones Show. Although, anyway, yeah, wash, rinse, and repeat. I have been doing this over and over again. The, the power, Jesus' name, have power. Yes. There's a but there, though, because if you say Jesus name in a certain air arena, they will come after you and they're going to silence you. They're going to strip you. They're going to fire you. They're going to block you. And in some places around the world, they will behead you and lock you up in prison. So does the name Jesus have power? Yeah, it has the power to get you killed. You all are ignorant to the whole aspect of what that mean by the name of Jesus having power. A basketball in my hand is powerless. I cannot play ball. I'm horrible at it. Take that same basketball and put it in the hand of uh, uh, Michael Jordan and that ball has much power. Well, he older now. <laughs> okay. But that power, that ball has a lot of power. I'm horrible at golf. I played it a few times and I did okay, but that's that's because I thought I did okay. But put it in the hand of, I think y'all get it, right? <laughs> I think y'all get the concept, right? So it depends on whose hand is it in. Because in the book of, uh, let's see, I'm about to say find it, Rogers, find it. <laughs> well, you, you still could do that. Find it. Uh, Acts chapter 4, John and Peter was in the temple uh, using the name of Jesus. Well, they, they healed the man, first of all. And then this council of high priests and priests and Levites, what have you, had a meeting about these brothers. And then when they met with them, it says, okay, listen, we're going to let you go, but you cannot use that same name, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Can't use it. Why? Because Jesus says they hated me first. So y'all's excuse is at least they're being introduced to Jesus because he's in the music. What makes you think if I say the name Jesus, I might get murdered, but I'm going to sing the name of Jesus and everything is fine. <laughs> Do y'all understand what y'all saying? It's the kinetic energy and the kinetic force behind the object that uh -huh, projects its ferocity. Uh -huh. I just don't understand that. So go to your school. Go to a public arena. Go to a state-funded function and say the name Jesus and you will be excommunicated. So how much power is it in his name? Well, the power comes when you want him. Say his name like y'all do uh, these uh, black boys and girls who got shot, or murdered, or what have you, by some white races or what have you. They'll say, say his name, say his name. George Floyd, say his name. Well, when it comes to the name of Jesus, if you want him, say his name. Say his name and God looks on your heart. And if you're sincere about wanting him, say his name and then there's power in that name. Because when you say his name because you have repented and you wanted him, then that name changes everything in your life. Y'all better hear me. You become a part of the body of Christ. And from that moment on, on your forever will be different from the person who decided not to. Your eternity looks different than the person who decided not to accept Jesus in their heart. Say his name. Confess with your heart, with your mouth, and believe in your heart. Say his name. That's the power behind the name. The next power behind his name is during judgment. Because the Bible says, 
at that name. Er, E R R R, Ernie shall bow, and Er tongue shall confess that he's Lord. Do you understand? There it is, Apostles Acts chapter 4, 5 through 7. The next day, the, the council of all the rulers and elders and teachers of religious law, all of them came together. They brought in the, the two disciples by what power or in whose name have you done this work? They said, Jesus. They said, okay, you got to get out of here. We forbid you. At that name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. You understand? That's where the power come in at conversion and, and judgment. You understand? Outside of those two places, I know y'all like to say in church, and there's no other name. When I say Jesus, stuff happens. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all start speaking in tongues. Be, 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 be. Okay? <laughs> y'all go in. E D D D I C. At that name of Jesus. This is true that. Things did happen at his name, but when you make it to whereas you have overly romanticized his name that every time you did that something happened, you're lying and deceiving the people. Because I dare you go in the courthouse and, and invoke Jesus' name. The judge is going to tell you, I have the power. Not this Christ that you brought up in here. This here is my judge joint. This courthouse, this here is my judge joint. Mm. Come on, James Foster. Dr. Foster said, did the Bible come out of the church or did the church come out of the Bible? <laughs> I'm trying to tell y'all. This here, right here, they don't belong to Christ. This here, my judge joint. So what did y'all do? The church... Filed under a 501c3. So what you tell Christ? You said, sorry, God, we don't really need your help because it looks like you ain't helping us anyway. So we're going to lean on the government under this filing because we want to save some money on taxes and all this stuff. We're going to go under the 501c3. Not even reading the fine print. It ain't even fine. The print is not even fine. It's right there in your face. It says, if you're under that filing, you are now under the grips of the government and you are considered a like a ward of the state the temp the, the wording is creature you are a creature of the state that's what the churches who file on the 501c3 you are a creature not under god but under the state the government which means you can only do so many things they are allowing you to worship God. You're back under a Roman rule in sense. Mm. But to keep them from spreading their propaganda any further, we must warn them not to speak anyone to anyone in Jesus name again. So they called the apostles back in and commanded them never again to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Yeah. But, but start spreading his, his name all over America today. Our so-called Christian nation. And watch what happened to you. Tasha Cobb. Uh, is it Leonard? <laughs> so let's go back to this post here. That, uh, that got me in all this trouble. Trouble, 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 trouble. All right. This post that I put up by uh, a brother who had some things to say about the Stella Awards. Now I'm looking on my wall and boy, y'all took over my wall. I got to go back on my wall and start, start taking, start taking some of it down, this stuff down. Y'all, y'all took over my Facebook wall. I don't even post on my wall. Why y'all, y'all on my wall? Okay. All right. Let me, let me try and figure out why it ain't coming up yet. Hold on, y'all. We got to move. We got to move. Got to move. When the law get ready. All right. Here it comes. It's coming. It's coming. Right here. This brother right here, mm -hmm. Ernest Pugh, made this post. If there was ever time to pivot from industry to ministry, that moment is here for me. 
The Gospel Hip Hop Awards, formerly known as the Stellar Awards, have given us a clear indication where the focus of their platform and its audience lies. They have set a clear message to those of us who have been in the gospel music industry for 15, 20 years that we are no longer needed, wanted, or welcomed on their stages anymore. Perhaps the powers that be feel pressured by sponsors and advertisers uh, to adorn the gospel with an element of entertainment. But whatever the case, uh, the writing is on the wall and do not plan to sit around and await my demise. Please understand as a creature, I'm sorry, <laughs> as a creative I will forever create music and release it into the earth and affect the flow of worship because by no means can these systems of the world stop deny destiny and purpose. It's pr uh, simply time to differentiate between industry and ministry. I promise to keep the main thing, the main thing, which is to advance the kingdom of God, not agendas that are rooted in the idolatry and greed. My heart goes out to all the forerunners who are being silenced in various platforms in which they contributed t time, energy, and resources for decades. Sadly, it's the end of an era and the beginning of the movement. Now, here's why I, I disagree with him. Sadly, it's the end of an era. did not start a, a couple of days ago uh, a, a, at the Stellas. That end of an era ended many decades ago. When I put this post up, uh, let's look at the comment section. All right, how do I do it? I don't want to make a comment, Facebook. I want to see the comments, all right? My brother uh, Ricardo preached the gospel here. And let's see, all of y'all were saying stuff. C.O. King, my dear brother, preached the gospel. Man, Keith preached the gospel. A lot of y'all, Bishop Samuel Butts, he preached the gospel. Uh huh, and uh, in uh, let's see, Tony Harris. Okay, and then uh, somebody who put the somebody put in the comments section an interview by him with Larry Reed. All right, hey, Larry Reed, <laughs> Larry to the Reed. All right, I haven't seen it yet. I purposely decided not to see it until now. All right, because I want to see what's going on. Uh oh. Are we gonna do this again? You was doing fine. We was doing fine in rehearsal. <laughs> Is it gonna play? Lord, I don't want it to play my TV. The video's playing on it. What TV, man? Okay, hold on. That you sing one of his songs at church. All right. By no means can these systems of the world stop destiny and the purpose is simply time to differentiate between industry and ministry let's watch this together the main thing the main thing which now i know their heads are cut off but this is the way my computer is doing it so bear with us that's the kingdom of god not agendas that are rooted in idolatry and let me greed. fast forward those happening on tv or tv on social media and they speak un you know their unfiltered opinion so i'm glad that you did that because now i can ask some questions did uh -oh. you did you not like that the stiller awards last night really looked and sounded a lot like the bet awards the hip-hop awards and the other award shows what was it you didn't you didn't like about that because that's what it sounded like to me <clears throat> Well, uh, first of all, I want to just thank you for this amazing platform that you use uh, to give voice to a lot of uh, people like me who we, we say what some people are thinking and you kind of give voice to that and allow us to do that. So first of all, I want to thank you for that. Um, you know, I, I respect art and, and I love all genres of music. I have two children who are 28 and 30, so I'm always listening to trap and hip hop and so I'm even R&B. So, I have a respect just for art, but I just feel like when we say gospel, the biggest night in gospel, and we say stellar awards, um, I'm looking at it from a point of we don't have to be the hip hop. And because, because believe it or not, when they do the BET awards, they have a segment where they give space and they honor gospel music. Right. So I just don't feel like why we need to have something as special as the gospel. In bad times, people need to hear good news. And I get it. However you can present it, we should present it. But I He's making a good point there. 
the uh, the BET Awards, the Grammy Awards, the American Music Awards, a lot of them do give time for gospel. This is why the Clark Sisters in the 80s, they were they were brought on stage uh, by uh, on the Grammy Awards. And this is why their mother, Maddie Moss Clark, was silenced by the Church of God in Christ. All right. Because they looked like they were performing for the world. All right. So this is nothing new, y'all. It's nothing new. So he's right. These secular awards would give time for the gospel. All right. And then when the gospel artists come out, they will win an award on something that sounds gospel. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like the church. You recognize it. You understand? That's what it is. The BT Awards now is trying to be so much like the world that you, you can't dif differentiate. And that's what he's saying. Because that's our night that we define as the biggest night in gospel. Why can't we level the playing field of where we're hearing from people who do praise and worship, even a little CCI, a little quartet, a little choir? Why? That's our night. So I don't know why we have to be defined by this element of entertainment and feel like we need to just uh, silence a community of people who have been around for like several years and you've made a lot of money off of us. But it's like now you need to do certain things, I guess, to appeal to your sponsors. You made a lot of money off of us. When I put this post up, some of you were talking about Ernest Pugh as if, you know, you, you out of the game, you old, you irrelevant. You, you wouldn't say this when you blah, blah, blah. Y'all went after the brother <laughs> for telling the truth because y'all have changed. Y'all got so caught in lukewarmness, it's a shame. So y'all went after this brother and y'all got offended by this brother who, who helped the game, <laughs> who y'all read rolled on the wings of Ernest Pugh. And now y'all want to kick him out. You're kicking your granddaddy out. <laughs> your granddaddy fed you. You get a certain age. Now you want to kick granddaddy out because now you got a, a new sound. Miss me with this. To me, I don't feel like we're showing the full picture of what the church looked like. If I had a drone and I was going through a church and all I saw was the kids in the back <clears throat> on their cell phones, I'm not seeing the front part of the church. And at one point, this was real special. We were not trying to be like anybody else. Remember the Bobby Jones show? Everybody came on that show, and I always have believed that church music works on church people. And so I just feel like church music work on church people. And we have kicked Mother Mayhem <laughs> and Sister Bobo out of the whole participation in gospel music. Kicked them out because it's, it's at, at y'all's churches. Many churches have kicked out hymns. No more hymns are being sung. No more traditional songs. And you already, you kicked the choir out a long time ago. So all we got now in our churches are praise teams. That's it. No testimony service. You got rid of that as well. So the, so, so Mother Mayhem cannot get with the service, the music part, because you, you, you have um, let the young folk take over. Or if there's not many young folk there, you decide to be like them. So you wanted, they had a king, so you wanted to be, you wanted to have a king. And God says, you don't need a king. What's wrong with the traditional praise uh, sounds and songs to songs, hymns, and spiritual songs? What's wrong with the, that style? You said, no, I want to be like that church that got uh, that big booming sound with the band. So what you do? I walked into storefront churches where they put up a big white screen, two of them. The storefront church seat, maybe, maybe 40 people. If 40 people in there is like a it's like a million people in an arena and they put up two big white screens right there in the middle of the church. I'm like, really? I, I am only two, three feet from the speaker. All right. When he sneezed, all his spittle is on my face. That's how close we are. But y'all put up two big white screens and PowerPoints. What do we need that for in the storefront church? <laughs> Why? Because you try to be like these other churches who look successful. And that's what's happening in the music. So all the praise and worship y'all got going on and the mother's boys sitting there twirling their thumbs. Well, I can't wait to pass it up because when these, these young folk get through gyrating, we're going to finally have some church up in here. <laughs> it's, it's, come on, Brother Drew. Make hymns great again. I just don't understand. I, I, don't, I don't get it you will no longer want the church people to pay attention, then take away all the artists that they've listened to for, for Come on, And there you have it. Yes, sir. And let me ask you this. Do, do you think, I mean, because I went live and I talked about the Stella Wars and I was praising the Stella Wars because for so long, you know, because I'm a pastor and an entertainer, so I'm on both Correct. sides. You a pastor and an entertainer. You are a freak of nature. <laughs>
<coughs> I just don't understand how can and, uh, let me stop. So I have always felt, oh my God, look at us. Why aren't we presenting what we do? We we can do more than holler and scream. We we Correct. can dress better. I know we have the potential. Let's be <clears throat> publicists, you know, our mix and our sound, our lighting, our staging can be better. Excellent. And, and to me this year, well, like, <laughs> yeah, we looking good. I mean, because if you flip through the channel, you couldn't tell that that was gospel um, Stella Awards because it looked on the same level as BET, everything that comes on BET. So I praise that. But I'm hearing what you're saying because I'm a church boy and an old school church boy. So I hear what you're saying. So with that being said, can't we do... You old school church boy, and we don't see no old school in you whatsoever. We just we don't see nothing but conformity on you, on you, man, man. I mean, cause cause in my opinion, I remember when I was um, nominated for a Stella Award. That there isn't room for quartet. The the choir almost disappeared, but they did show up this year in honor Ricky Dillard. Well, can't we do both? Can't we do all of what they did last night at the same time? Pay homage to the, the, the foundation that built the Stella Awards and that built gospel music? Yeah, and, and I want to I just say one other thing. This is by no means, my post was not to bash Central City Productions, Don Jackson. That platform is powerful. I've ministered on it. I've been featured on the Stella. As you can see behind me, I've been nominated about 16 times. Uh, on the cellar, that platform has laid eyes on me and done great things. But what I'm saying is, yes, we can do both, but I feel that we are pressured to say that. And, and my thing is, are you going to believe in the the audience that you're that you're going for? Or are you going to safely trust in the fact that there is a if I put Shirley Caesar on there, Shirley's fan base is going to tune in. Yes. If I, if, if I put a Byron Cage on there, if I put any yes. Beverly Crawford on there, because we live for the Beverly Crawford moment, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just as that audience is looking for the lights, the camera, the action, mm -hmm. the hats, the skinny jeans, the t-shirts, and the hat, I yep. think we're saying we don't care what you say. Mm -hmm. And the proof is in the pudding. Go back and look at the ratings from the Hip Hop Awards and the B&T, and then go look at the, the, the ratings for what we had last night. And He's he's right. He's he's right. What what are we even doing this for? All right. When I go to secular arenas and I do, I go to secular concerts. I went to go see Gladys Knight just just a, a couple months ago. OK, I went to go see uh, P.J. Morton just a few weeks ago. You know, I went to see Mary J. Blyde. I, I went I I went to go see Olivia Newton John. Her, uh, God rest her soul. She died. What? Yesterday, day before yesterday. I want to go see Olivia Newton-John and Donny Osmond. Me. This was a couple years ago. Well, more than a couple years ago. I was blown away by the sound because I love Olivia Newton. That just was my girl. I was just hopelessly devoted to her. <laughs> okay. She the woman I want. She's the one. Who, who, who? <laughs> she was. Uh, and um, I sat there and I was entertained by the same sound that she's always been known for olivia newton john sound she did not cross over and try to do nothing else but what she has always been known for donnie osmond did the same thing he sang the songs that he has always been known for and they called it puppy love <laughs> You know what I mean, he did stuff from his brothers and stuff from his singles. Of course, we don't really know much about his singles. I mean, okay. And then they decided to do a Grease uh, uh, songs because, because John Travolta wasn't there. And after the show, I mean, I was I encore, encore. <laughs> bravo, bravo. I went wild. Okay. One bad apple don't spoil a whole bunch of girls. Ow! Okay. Oh, I was involved. And the show was over and I had the privilege of talking to him afterwards because these these you gospel folk, y'all go hide, you know, you got to pay a certain amount of money to go backstage like these secular folks, I went to go see Kenny G, same way. These secular folks, I'm able to go back either backstage or they go they go and talk to us out 
in the vestibule. I don't understand that. How is it that I can't I can't get close to you all who are in the gospel arena, but when I go to secular concerts, I I went to go see Brian McKnight, and he and I is in the hallway talking. I mean, these are secular artists, okay? So I'm back there. I'm I'm on I'm in the vestibule talking to Donny Osmond, and we crack it up like he was my best friend. And me and Larry was talking to him, and we were talking about his how crazy the outfits were. And that, that stupid song we call it. <laughs> I said, Donnie, what's the, who idea was it to for y'all to sing that stupid song called Crazy Horses? It was stupid. <laughs> he laughed. I said, I know, I know you were too young to write that. He said, No, nah, right, let me tell you about that. Let me tell you about that. Okay? These these people here are real. You gospel folk. I got to have a VIP. Elemental P, RSVP, a thousand dollar seat. I I oh I got the, I got to know somebody who knows somebody's producer who knows somebody's secretary to just get a picture with you. I just don't understand you people. I, I just don't I don't I don't get it. All right, so that's why I like the secular uh, music. It's wonderful unless it is too much for me, then I don't listen to it. But at least they stay true to who they are. There, what the Bible says, you either hot or you cold. God can at least a, a respect a worldly man who's cold. <laughs> Jesus healed the blind man. The blind man knew he was blind. But Jesus rebuked the Pharisee because he said they think they can see, but they are blind. That's you who are in the gospel industry. You think you are winning folks to Christ, but you ain't doing nothing but making them folk dance to your song that got Jesus in the lyrics. I keep getting in trouble for this. Kirk Franklin said years ago, he wrote an op-ed. He says, man, I listen to my son's music and it's, it, you know, it was hip hop music. He says, I needed to do something to reach the young folk. He said, so I started to write this secular stuff. Kirk Franklin, when he first came out, it was, you are the reason why I sing. I mean, he was singing gospel song melodies from hell. Yeah, that crossed just a little bit, but it still was a, a, a palatable, <laughs> okay? But he was doing some beautiful gospel melodies when he first came out. I'm talking the first couple albums. And then when he came out with Stomp, he said, I had to do this because I wanted my music. I wanted the message of the gospel to get out there to the young folks. So I started to write this stuff. And so he started to write music and, and he started to uh, sample Earth, Wind, and Fire and Funkadelics, Parliament, Parliament and what have you. And he's been known as the guy who gets on stage and holds his, holds his pants up and, and, and juke his... His his junk at y'all. He gyrates. <laughs> he, he puts on really tight pants so the, so the women in the front row can get all. It. My son, who was here, he's on the road now. I pray for my son Walter Jones. He's on his way back to Atlanta. Long drive, long drive. He's driving. He had to drive uh, Jonathan McReynolds around for months, so he's exhausted. That tour wore my son out. So he came here and, and just crashed on my couch last night. He just was, t Pops, I'm exhausted. Poor guy. I wish I could drive him back home. That's a 12-hour drive, y'all. It's, 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 it's really 10, but it's 12 <laughs> back to Atlanta. So he's on that road right now. Y'all pray for his safety. But uh, he, he and I were talking about, he said, Pops, you know, I, I, you know he drives. He has to be at every concert because he's got to be backstage uh, you know, to make sure Jonathan get the things that he need. And he said, Pops, some of the things that I see, <laughs> he said, it's just, it's just, um, that, that Kirk Franklin, <laughs> he said, <laughs> Jonathan will get on stage and he does some wonderful stuff. He says, Jonathan got, Jonathan is a very decent performer. You know, you see Jonathan, you see, you, you just, you see decency. He said, but Pops, when Kirk get on that stage, <laughs> He get to throw on his junk <laughs> and the women are just they taking off their clothes. <laughs> he said, I I don't I don't I don't know. Now my son is only what thirty two. He said, son, Pops, I don't understand what's going on, what changed, how did this happen? Why do he feel that he need to perform like like the world? And I said, Kirk did that. So then when Kirk uh released his projects he did an op-ed in 2000, maybe 15, and I, and I talked about it on my podcast. And Kirk said that I thought 
that my music was was reaching these young folks with the gospel he says i realized that it wasn't winning nobody now this was out of the mouth of kirk franklin he said it wasn't winning nobody all they were doing was just dancing they heard jesus but they it didn't matter it didn't, he said it, didn't, it wasn't saving nobody. It just was making them rock to the beat. That was Kirk. I said, see, I've been telling y'all this forever. Y'all don't want to listen to me. Accomplish your goal? Because you, a lot of people that I was looking even on your post, they said they turned to TV. You won't get credit for that, for that viewership. So did you accomplish what you meant to accomplish or should you rethink it and allow the fan base to still have an option to see their favorite artists on there. That's all I'm saying. And please, can we please keep, I'm by no means hating because I didn't get nominated. I haven't released the album since the pandemic in 20, to, in 2000. So I wasn't looking to be nominated. I wasn't looking to get, I really wasn't looking to perform on there, any of the above. I was making an observation, Larry, based on the fact that I'm 56 years old this year. And at 20 years in the military, I did the same thing. I said, I've been here 20 years. I got promoted quick. I got a pivot. I pivoted to the gospel music industry. I'm looking at 21 years over here. If the writing is on the wall and it looks like I'm not needed, I'm not wanted, what am I going to do? I'm pivoting somewhere else. Mm. Somebody else may want to stay 20 more years. I don't wait around. Mm. I bust a move. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you know, and, and, and I hear that. And, and I, I bust a move. I even said on the line, I said, well, where was Charlotte? You know? And I, and I miss there, there. There's never been a proper representation, in my opinion, even the year I think of 15 when I was nominated. I thought there, it, it wasn't a good representation. So I think they tried to mm. represent the rappers and, and other contemporary artists, and mm -hmm. it was a hard, yeah, you know, in, in your opinion, a hard left turn. You know, in my in my opinion. Um, I think it was it was good, but I hear what you're saying and you're making sense. Yeah. I think we place. should do segments. If it's if it's Y'all I don't think y'all see what's going on here. Ernest Pugh is speaking truth. It's difficult for Larry Reed right now in that room. Notice from the very beginning, he was he was praising the Stella Wars and then he tried to uh get on Pew's level by saying, I understand. Okay, yeah, I get what you're saying. And then he would go back to his entertainment because at the beginning, notice he says, and I supported it. I praised it. But I get what you're saying. <laughs> and because it's difficult to be in a room with the truth. When the truth ain't in you, it's hard. The way of a transgressor it's hard. Y'all better hear me. You folks out there who've got this, the the gift of the the uh, the uh, discernment, let it kick in right now. <laughs> night. Then why can't you have? If you got say sixty minutes, why can't you have ten minutes of hip hop, ten minutes of praise and worship, ten minutes of quartet, ten, and just say this with it, this an oldie but goodie. We had the Williams brothers who have done this for fifty years. They never call. Not one Williams brother. We have, we have quartets and people who have built Motown. We have probably about a great number of artists that have been affiliated with that Motown label that were in that room on Sunday night. For you to not call the Williams brothers name, and they, they're doing a, a, for, for a, a, a farewell tour. So if we were going to honor somebody, I mean, I'm glad for who they honored, but I mean, can we be a little bit more inclusive? And this is the main reason why I make this point. Not for my, for me, first of all, gospel music and singing on the road is not my main source of income. Let me just preface it by saying that. The, sec the second thing I want to just say is when we come out here and try to, to uh, uh, get visibility and exposure to move your body of work, it is impossible to do so without the vehicle of radio, yep. retail outlets, and... Yep television appearances right so if you're going to be in it and you're in it to win it you're going to need the vehicle of that television That's so right. what i'm saying if we're all trying to eat and we're all trying to propel our body of work then you got to open the door for the older people that have been around yes. for decades to yes. still be able to make good on their investment Come as well. On, That's all I'm saying. And I love the evolution of music. I love the fact that Me you too. can stream my music on digital platforms 
I love it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I would love for my fan base to get to see me on a platform. Yes, Thank God for Bobby Cartwright and the Cele uh, and the uh, Superfest, because if it were not for that pro, pro uh, platform, I don't know where we would go. Yep. Yeah, that's good. I, and the, of the artists that you name, I know all those artists, and, and I would love for those artists to be introduced to the new to the new generation. But I think one of the things that the Stella Wars don't has done is really good. See I, I, what I tell y'all. <laughs> what I tell y'all. Larry cannot sit in that same room. He will listen tentatively and say, mm hmm mm hmm I get it, I get it, I get it. And then B U T. Not B E T. B U T. But it's called interjection. But I think the Stella did a great job. <laughs> if so, we wouldn't be having this conversation. People, what you're saying? Yeah, it was so bad when I used to review and do commentary on Stella Awards, and I do it on every in sixteen and seventeen. I was doing it on every award show, but then when it came to us, I was like, "Oh, our outfits are terrible on the red carpet. The music, is terrible. <laughs> the mix is bad. Why they put that artist in that? It's horrible." Okay. I remember, what's her name? Mm. Hawkins, Tremaine Hawkins came out with her album in 1990, I don't know, 91 maybe, Fall Down on Me, okay? That album, man, that song right there ripped through the gospel industry and really uh, caused a big uproar because we had never up until that time, our generation, we had never heard anything like that and called it gospel, not from someone who was a part of the circle. When I say circle, as to Hawkins, as Commission, Hezekiah Walker, uh, that's, uh, you know, the Winans, that, that, that whole circle, and then all of the choirs that we know about, Chicago Mass, blah, blah, blah. Okay, John P. Key. That circle, the, 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 the Clarks, and then, of course, the Hawkins. We had never heard anything that raw. Fall out! And she was screaming. And it sounded so, it sounded almost demonic in the 19, now, right now, it ain't nothing. But back then, it sounded demonic, and she got in so much trouble for that, till the girl had to apologize. <laughs> Apologize. Uh, hey, Terrell, was it? Google it. I thought it was like 1990. Was it like 1989, 90, something like that? Terrell, Google that for me. I want to know. It was. It was like wow, and she she had apologized, and Vicky Winans went on stage at the Stella Awards and put her blue jeans on and this was the this was the age of where they started having dancers on stage and she started to dance to um I think it was get loose what's the song break loose and she dancing with those singers and when Stella was over she had a radio show here in Chicago on WGCI and that Sunday morning, the girl had to apologize. <laughs> Ain't nobody apologizing right now. It was uh, her 1986 album, The Search Is Over. Thank you. So Terrell is, is, uh, was correct. It was 80s, uh, late 80s. Yes. Thank you, Terrell. 86. That girl had to apologize. <laughs> There's no way no gospel artist will be apologizing for their music today. No, no. So, to prove to y'all that this is old, let me pull up a video, and, I, and, and um, I'm sure YouTube is probably going to snatch or silence or do something. I don't know. I'm sure it owns that. But let me show y'all how old the concept is. The Clara Ward I, I Singers. The Clara Ward singers, they didn't start it, but they show enough did some stuff. This is the 
uh who shows this this is the this is the mike douglas show all right 1966 all right i discovered america that year nobody's feet are still your feet will start moving right away they are the clara ward singers welcome them <laughs> Now, that's 1966, Claire Ward. That's the farthest they're going to go. And that was shocking enough. In walked the Flip Wilson show many years later, 19, well, not too many, 1971. <laughs> Five years later, things changed. <laughs> Watch out. Watch <laughs> out. Then you start seeing it gets she's a little bit okay let me not say it <laughs> Terrell Terrell said knee bone connected to the leg bone <laughs> <laughs> I like you, Terrell. The bones got together. Oh, here she come. Here she come, y'all. Here they go. Here they go. And they performing for the world. <laughs> Here she go. You better gyrate. <laughs> you better gyrate. Now. Now, what is that? That's Kirk Franklin. And him throwing his junk at the women in the front row. <laughs> That's all this is. There's nothing new under the sun. We read it last night in the Zoom meeting. For those of y'all who made the Zoom class last night, so glad y'all were there. We read from Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Was it? Or chapter 3? It's in both places. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and 15. It talks about there's nothing new under the sun. These girls were just doing what Kirk Franklin is doing today. Nothing different. So what do we do with this conversation and this talk? I got to go back to the beginning. <laughs> Ferris Evans. <laughs> Bones got in show. I got to go back to the beginning. Gospel music it's always been loved by the world and it goes back to the scriptures it goes back to old testament when they captured the israelites and and sent them uh, the babylonians came and went to the northern kingdom and captured them and took them off 
Now they are slaves to the Chaldeans, and they said, sing us a song. What? What? Yes, yeah, sing us not just a song, sing us your native song. And the Jews were like, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How can we sing when we're in a strange land? When the enemy laughs at our... That's the commission. Wonderful song. That's what you all are asked to do. Sing us your Zion song. Come on, Elder McGee. These preachers are here helping me. Mm -hmm. I know the one who sings, who played the tambourine. Oh, with Claremont. Really? From Baltimore. Wow, Ron, you're telling your age. So the, the world has always been a lover of gospel music, not for salvation purposes, no, but for feeling. The slave master wanted the slaves to sing us your native song. Kuta Kinte or Chicken George or Fiddler, they sang their songs, and the master loved it. So now the world comes on the, on, the, on the scene with you all, and not only do the, the world love it, but the world then decided to join forces with you. Some of them got saved, but they brought their music with them in walks. Thomas Dorsey. Thank God I was able to meet him <clears throat> before he passed. To hear his story was gripping to me because he was a blues uh, piano player and he wrote these songs and they were songs that you can't, you still can't sing today. Lyric, lyric wise, you can't sing <laughs> them songs, <laughs> not, not near the church. <laughs> you can sing them in the world now because we got, the, now the, the lyrics are very raunchy now in, in R&B and hip hop, it's just, uh, look at Beyonce. A whole album of illicit, explicit, <laughs> illicit and explicit. All right. So he joined forces with the with the church here in Chicago, Ebenezer Baptist, and then he went to he joined uh, the church that got uh, that burned down here. That monument. What was the name of it? Is it Pilgrim Pilgrim Baptist? Bringing that same blues sound in. The church rejected it. They said, uh-uh, that's worldly music. And you're going to put some gospel lyrics to it. Ray Charles did the reverse. He took the, the sound of the church and put uh, secular lyrics to it. But here's the thing. <laughs> here's the irony behind that. By the time Ray Charles came around in the 60s, the music of Thomas Dorsey bluesy sound had already infiltrated the church for several decades. <laughs> so what Ray Charles was doing was he wasn't taking uh, so much the church sound. He was taking the sound of the, of the bluesy sound of Thomas Dorsey that was already in the world that came in the church. The church then adopted it. And then he took that same sound and just pretty much gave it back to the world. <laughs> and he put some secular lyrics to it. I mean, it really, when you look at it, that's the irony behind it. <laughs> that's the irony behind it. So what happened? The church lost its identity. We don't know who you are today. You're just trying to, my, my fact, no, I could already say you're just trying to dress like the church. You don't even dress like the church. So no one know who you are. Thank you, Tanya, for the Super Chat. We don't know. Because now when you turn on the Stella Awards, it's the Stella Gospel Award, but is it? Is it really? So it's either objective or subjective because there are no such thing as a gospel melody. I've said this over and over and over again. There's no such thing as a gospel melody. There are only gospel lyrics. 
A melody is a melody. What identifies it is the lyric form and who decided to put a stamp on it. <laughs> then Elvis took the church and blues sound and took to another stage. Come on, Ferris Evans, you better preach this with me. So there's no such thing. So if I sit here and write a melody that sounds secular, it's because you, your mindset of your experience of a secular sound is with you. Your experience of a secular sound is with you. I'm writing this melody and, and maybe the Lord has given me this, this particular temple and beat and meter to do this. All right. It's mine. I'm going to call it gospel because once I put lyrics on here, now it's categorized as gospel. But there's a problem even with that. Because uh, to everything, turn, turn, turn. There is a reason, turn, turn, turn. That is a rock and roll group singing a, a melody to the book of Ecclesiastes. But it was never called gospel. <laughs> <laughs> love this man. I love Doc Evans. Y'all, what's the name of that group, that rock and roll group? Uh, it's called Turn, Turn, Turn in 1970s. It was never called gospel. But yet, it was a gospel song based off of its lyrics. <laughs> and then, uh, Satchmo started singing, Oh, when the saints mm, mm, go marching in. Why, how was that categorized? It was categorized as jazz. <laughs> but it came from us. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't each genre of music have a basic sound? Yes, it used to. <laughs> but I get what you said by basic. It used to. But look at the, again, look at the Stella Awards. Look at the music. Look at the Ty Trippett. Look at his new album. Well, look at his old album, but look at his new album. Yeah, the birds sing that song. Thank you. Joel, look at his new, look at his new album. When you listen to it, it sounds like any hip-hop group or, or, or artist could have performed it. Even in some of the lyric forms. It, it should sound like a, a secular artist could have done it. But it is categorized as gospel. Why? Because of the artist himself. Mm-hmm. So how did that happen where now we don't know where this go, <laughs> where, where, where this go? I can see the world was doing it different, but the church, we've gotten so caught up in wanting to, I think we have FOMO. Mm -hmm. I think we got FOMO. <laughs> what is the forbidden chord? Yeah, I did that show too. Uh, that one beats that forbidden chord is a, is a, is the one of the most stupidest things I've seen. <laughs> the Catholics have what's called a, a forbidden chord. It's I, I'll, I'll have to find the show and, and, and re redo it. If I if I pull them pull up my piano, out, I'll show you what it is. And that chord is in the song called "Tomorrow." I give my life tomorrow. Thought about today. Very well might be. I'll show you what the chord is. Too late. And who say tomorrow will ever come for you? Da 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 da. da, 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 da and say. There's the chord. That is called the forbidden chord right there. And you cannot play that in the Catholic Church. It's a dem it's a demonic chord. It's the dumbest thing I've heard. In the, way. the dumbest thing. Is, that's why I say there's no such thing as an evil chord, demonic chord, gospel chord, uh, secular chord. A chord is a chord. God made the music. He put hertz and waveforms in the air. It's vibrations. God made all of it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter who plays it, how it's played. God made the music. But just like the Bible, you can make the Bible say anything you want it to say. So you can taint. 
you can taint or defile the Bible. Mm -hmm. Hey, Christian Moore's here. Mm -hmm. You can taint the church. You can go inside and, and God uh, punish the Israelites for defaming the, the temple. You understand? So what's happening is, is if you're in church and, and God uh, through Paul says to encourage one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, now we got a problem here. Because when you turn on the Estella Award, did you hear a psalm, a hymn, or a spiritual song? Well, people are like, I don't know. <laughs> Then what makes a psalm a human and spiritual song? What makes it that? I guess I got to do part two of this. Maybe I will tomorrow. We got a problem. I think again, objective. I think it's, I think it's up here. Because what makes the dollar bill worth a dollar? Not you. The powers that be make the dollar bill worth a dollar. It's called the Federal Reserve. They determine how much that dollar is worth. And then down the road, they can decide that that dollar is worth more or less. Y'all better hear me. When did we start using uh, the Bible to replace our relationship? <laughs> I need a word, <laughs> James. Mm -hmm. We are the only ones const uh, constantly enlarging our territory into enemy terrain under the guise of God. Yes, we're doing that. Fiat currency. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> you said worthless. <laughs> and that's exactly it, Carol's. The fiat is absolutely worthless it's not even worth the paper it's on there you go come on you preaching this it's backed by a promise and it, the promise was made by someone you don't trust which means it's backed by nothing you don't trust the government un until the government wants to give you a, a, pay, a bailout or a stimulus check, or a PPP loan, now you trust the government. Because if a government check come to your house, you can bank on it. You can set your clock on it. <laughs> you can rise in the morning on it. That check is good. Even though we don't trust the, the, the church, uh, the government that is. So again, I make these scenarios and put it back to the church and y'all's music and, and y'all's preachers and all the way. It's the same thing. What makes it worth something? People or the creator of it? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Satan is the sugar knight of today's gospel. Trusting the government is like letting a two-year cook and telling them not to burn <laughs> the house down. You see what I'm saying? So the fiat dollar is worth nothing. It's backed by nothing but a promise. It used to be backed by gold. You used to be able to go to the bank with a dollar and come out with gold and vice versa. Not no more because in 1971, Richard Nixon took us off the gold standard. But here's the thing. He had to do it or we were going to really be in a worse situation. So he had to do it temporarily. This is what Larry Reed is saying about the Stella Awards. They had to do it. That's what, that's what Larry Reed was alluding to. He was listening to Earl Pugh uh, say, Ernest Pugh, Earl, say what he's saying. But then he says, but the Stella Awards doing a good thing because they have to do it in order to be relevant. <laughs> I don't think y'all getting this. So this is why God told the children of Israel, separate yourself. Now here comes the gospel, y'all. Separate yourself. Can y'all tell me what sanctification means? 
And it don't mean traveling shoe, Lord, got on my traveling shoe, traveling shoe. That don't mean that's got to be sang at the, at the Stella Awards. Matter of fact, that would drive me crazy. And I like traditional music, but that even that would drive me crazy if every artist got up there and saying, oh, traveling shoe, Lord, got on. Oh, I want me a Grammy. I, I mean, a Stella. Yeah, that would drive me crazy. <laughs> Set apart. It means to be different. So we used to get up and, and testify. Thank God for being here, being saved, sanctified. <laughs> okay, and they called y'all holy rollers. It didn't bother me. I didn't want to be like the world. I'm glad they called me something different. Because then they recognize I'm a part of that group over there called the Christians. I liked that. Because I, I realized that I was doing something good for Christ that they recognized that I was one of his. But here's the thing about Satan and demons. They too tremble at the name of Jesus. But you all don't. Ain't that about nothing? The world respects the music to where uh, the Commodores wrote uh, that uh, Jesus is love and it sounded exactly like the church. Why? Because they respected the church. Satan respects. He trembles when Jesus walks in the room. You all doing this, this, uh, the opposite. You walking away from the tenets of all that you are or they, 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 they called you Christian at Antioch. You was different. Now, you're not different. You have conformed so you look like the world. And in walks Kim Burrell. <laughs> CL, bless it to you, sir. I talked about you earlier today on the show. You got to rewind. In walk Kim Burrell. Okay, I'm, 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 uh, I promise y'all I'm not going to talk about her no more uh, until after I make this statement. Kim Burrell was singing with all of them secular folks, hooked up with Pharrell Williams and all these other folks. She was singing at everybody's party, everybody's wedding, bar mitzvah, you name it. All the world loved her, her little runs and turns. She was singing for the Grammys and the Oscars and whatever. All of them award shows. She was all oh, they loved her, love her, love her. She gets in her pulpit and talk against the homosexuals. <laughs> Somebody's recording it. It leaks all over the country, and the homosexuals went heavy on her. So how dare you? How dare you? It was, it was going to the church and picketing and all kind of stuff. <laughs> Why? Because you are an eagle, and you mess around with the buzzards. <laughs> Going to all the buzzers' parties, RSVP, and at all of the buzzers' events. And then you want to turn around and rebuke the buzzer <laughs> in your private meeting because you was on a hot mic. <laughs> so it went after you. Then you had to make a kind of an apology. I, I, I didn't mean to. I love everybody. Wait a minute. And so then Pharrell went on the homosexual show, Ellen DeGeneres, and threw you under the bus <laughs> because you both supposed to have been on the Ellen show. But you made a mistake. You spoke against the company. You spoke against the king and the king threw you in jail. <laughs> he threw you in jail. You turned your back on the king. The Roman emperor Domitian through John the Revelator on the island of Patmos because he was preaching the gospel. And then God visited him on the, on the island and gave him this wonderful writing we have today. Why can't you have an experience like that? Get kicked out of events like I have been. Excommunicated and not invited to the strip joints. When I worked for Cor Corporate America, they did not invite me to the strip joints. Why? Because I was different. Sound like what happened to uh, Lot. 
when the men of the city showed up at the door. Come on, CL. I was different, so they would not invite me to the strip joints. And I'm glad they did. So everybody went to their little, their little hot parties. And then one day there was a, a massive layoff. Word that a layoff was happening in the, comp in the corporation. So now the co-workers are coming to my desk. What they, what they, what y'all call them? Those dividers in the office. What y'all call those dividers? Everybody got their own little desk. Not is it cubicles? A cubicle? They was coming to my cubicle one by one. Brother Jones, could you pray for me? <laughs> Can you pray for me? One by one. Can you pray for me? I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. If I lose this job, I'm gonna lose everything. I wanted to say so bad. Uh, why don't you ask the strippers to pray for you? Uh, our co-worker Bojangles over there. Remember his his party he had that night in in the basement, where all of the strippers showed up. Ask him to pray for you. <laughs> I wanted to say it, but the spirit rebuked me. <laughs> said, no, you can't. You can't make fun of their calamities. Don't do it. Be an encouragement. And here's your opportunity to wake up something in them. Here's your opportunity to respond. Here's your opportunity to preach the gospel right here on your job. They scared. They're coming to you because you wasn't with the buzzards. The night before. So you all who feel like Ernest Pugh is out of date, old, and I see you, clock keeper, and he's insignificant, blah, 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 blah. Fine. You all going to continue to progress further and further way out there so far till nobody going to recognize you. Nobody going to recognize you. And then the Antichrist, he ain't going to come knocking. You going to open the door because he looked just like you. He looked like you. So I lose friends over the way I talk. I got, I got some bunkers. I've got some friends here who I know they were loving the Stella. And everything about it, I didn't watch it at all. Well, first of all, I I I, I, I unplugged my cable years ago, so I don't even, and I don't even, I ain't paying for no streaming for something I don't watch, so I, I don't I don't I don't pay for that. And if my next door neighbor had it, I wasn't going to watch it either. Nope, I wasn't going to no family. No, nope, I just can't watch it no more. Even the secular world had something different. Do y'all not understand that the Grammy Awards in the 70s and 80s when we were watching it had a level of decency? <laughs> you could actually watch the Stella Awards when we were coming up. All ages. <laughs> and they called it rock and roll. It didn't matter. We actually could watch it. And it was, it was a level of decency. <laughs> Can't watch it today. There's no way I can watch it today. And so we're thinking the only thing we got left is the is the is the, um, is the Stella. And then the Stella decided to give uh, Kanye West a Grammy for Jesus Walks. Jesus walk with me. Why? Because he said Jesus. This is how the world capture, captures you and captivates you. They put Jesus, God, Holy Spirit in their lyrics, and they got you every time. Pied Piper Spirit. They get you every time. They know how to act like the Christian, and they know how to get you. So they gave this boy, they nominated this boy for a Stella because he got Jesus walk in the song, even though he cussed in the song. And when it came to their understanding that the song had a cuss word in it, then they re revoked the award. <laughs> That's how ridiculous some of you are. 
Sing us your Zion song. <laughs> or we gonna do it. Either you gonna sing it or we gonna do it. That's the problem. So, all throughout the scriptures, music has never been used to evangelize nobody. Here's why I always get in trouble every time I say it. And I've been saying this for years. You can never find nowhere in the scriptures where music was used to evangelize or save anybody. Y'all made that up. And if you can find it, put it in the comment section. Put it there. Because music was used for God's people. And it was used as a weapon for God's people. It was used because the prophet Elisha needed it. He called for the, for the minstrel to play because they asked him to prophesy. It was for the people of God. It was used for King Jehoshaphat who went out there to war. They put the singers and the musicians on the front line. Why? To encourage them and to use as a weapon to wipe out the enemy of Moab. So they got confused and killed themselves. That's what the music was used for. The Levites used it for temple worship. Saul had an evil spirit in him and God gave the, David the ability to play. And what did it do? It didn't save Saul. It just, it just rid that evil spirit out of him. Y'all better hear me. Music was never used to evangelize the world. That's God's music. It's like the Ark of the Covenant. When the, when, the Israel, when the Philistines grabbed the Ark of the Covenant, that was God's property. I'll play on Kirk Franklin. That was God's property. And when they had the Ark of the Covenant, they put it next to their music idol. And guess what happened to their music idol? Dagon fell down. They said, oh, let's go in there and pick him back up. Oh, we're sorry. We're sorry, Dagon. We didn't mean to put the gospel industry in here. <laughs> and they went, they went away and came back, and Dagon not only fell down, but he was decapitated. Looked like he was, he was, he was uh, praying. <laughs> he was bowing down to the Ark of the Covenant. And the Philistine says, get this Ark out of here. Get it out of our territory. Y'all better hear me. The music was never used to delight the enemy. It was used to destroy the enemy. And in the New Testament, same thing. It was never used to evangelize nobody. They had communion with the Lord and they sang a hymn and they left. Number two, Paul and Silas was in jail at midnight and sang a hymn. <laughs> they sang praises. And the jailers heard them. Uh. And the chains were loose. Nobody got saved because of the music. Y'all like to go, y'all like to go fight me on that. Nobody got saved because of the music. Because if so, the jailer would have just lifted up his hand and says, I, I want to be saved. No, when he saw what happened, he wanted to commit suicide. <laughs> It wasn't until they preached the gospel to him. That's when he, come on, jailhouse rock. Y'all better hear me. So the music was never used to evangelize. Nobody it was used to encourage the saints. He wrote this he, twice in the scripture. He mentioned the Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, not for the world, but to encourage one another. Y'all better hear me. And then in Revelation, which we talked last night, chapter 4, now you see them in heaven using what the music was used for. You see? So out of, from Genesis to the book of Revelation, we see where music was used. God's music was used for this. What happened to you all and how you use your music? Huh? What happened? where you can't find nowhere in the scripture on how y'all are using your music. Huh? I just don't get it. I, to, to, I just don't understand. You can't find no scripture nowhere out of the 66 books 
that can prove your point on how y'all are using your music today. That music is for us. And the problem is you're lazy. You want to use this gospel music to try and save folks because you're too lazy to preach the gospel. So you rather hey, yeah, 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 sing it. You want to sing vibrations thinking that's going to win them and then you walk away. But you can't talk to them. You are lazy. Shiftless. And God can't use you. Sing us your Zion song. Ooh, they heard the gospel. No, they heard a nice beat. What about those people who heard, they heard the song and they started to cry. And I saw them crying at a Michael Jackson concert and a Prince concert too. I went to go see Donnie, uh, I just told y'all, Donnie Osmond and the girls were in there crying. And they call it puppy. Lo- <laughs> Donnie. <laughs> I'm like, white girl, <laughs> back it up. <laughs> back, back that thing up. I'm trying, I'm trying to enjoy the man singing puppy love, and you over here crying. <laughs> I'm Donnie. I'm Donnie. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. So what somebody cried at you because they sang in your song thinking that they going to lift their hands and give God the praise and get saved again. Everybody cry because a, a melodies make people cry. <laughs> Follow them home and watch them all week and see what happens. They revert right back. <laughs> and the ones who come down to the altar because the song is sang, these are not new converts. These are people who were already in the family. They just went out there and came back. Do you understand what I'm saying? Listen to the average person who said they have been converted. They were converted years ago. And they're coming back to what is familiar. My point is stronger and stronger. You got it. I'm talking about unbelievers. They ain't never. They ain't never knew the Lord. Never. All right, y'all. I think I peed y'all off long enough. Many artists who win double awards claim they evangelize through their music. They would they would hate this message. <laughs> Baby Dinah. I know they would. <laughs> Becky. Oh, man. Lola said the book of Enoch and Jasher discussed this very thing, too. I'm trying to tell y'all. Mm-hmm. What's the reason why we sing? That? <laughs> Come on, what's the reason? I'm telling y'all, this is why I, this is where my license keep, keep getting snatched. This is why they keep, they, they don't like me in the church. It shouldn't be in the church. All right. You got any questions? I'll go ahead and answer right quick. I got three minutes. My show, Julia, an hour and a half. All right. I got three minutes. <laughs> All right. And I've got to, I've got to edit the Book of Revelation uh, teaching we did last night and put it on YouTube for tonight. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Terrell. He said, I'm making folks mad, but it's the truth. So what's the remedy here? Keep singing your gospel song. I really don't care what style of music that you sang it in, what have you, blah, blah, blah. My problem is I don't recognize you. The world recognize you as theirs. So the scripture says, be not conformed, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm. So that means your music too. Because everything starts with a thought. It's premeditated. Everything you do is premeditated. <laughs> it's just premeditated. I, I've written over 2,000 songs, y'all. Many of y'all heard a lot of my stuff. All right? But I sat there and premeditated <laughs> and, and, and decided this is how I'm going to write the lyric and the music. And some of my music, if you didn't put the lyric to it, you would hear Bach, you would hear classical, you would hear some soft rock, you would hear some soul, you would hear a lot of jazz in my music. Why? That that is what influenced me coming up. My father, being a deacon of the Church of God in Christ, we would be on our way home from church, and he turned on the goth, uh, the jazz and the blues station. That's how I was introduced 
to secular music through my mother and my father, who both were saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, that would have been a burning fire. My parents introduced me to Burt Bacharach, Engelberg, Humpeldink, um, obviously many of the black artists, Stevie Wonder, uh, Dinah Shore, <laughs> who I didn't know can sing. I mean, I, 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 my mother had a, where is it? The Columbia record, the, the, I still got it. I always do this. It's somewhere around here. Oh, over here. This tape right here. That is the original tape from the 70s. Uh, that might be 89, I don't know. This is Burt Bacharach. This is the original tape from my mother's stash from almost 40 years ago. She was part of the Columbia Tape Club. I don't know if she paid the bill or not. <laughs> but this is the original tape. This is the last one left. She introduced me to this kind of music. And I thought that I thought that it was some of the greatest music I had ever heard because there was a silence. There was a I feel like we wasn't getting anything when I was coming up. It was just like the same old gospel music. I was like, okay, this, this is, this is good. This is good. But I was bored until I, 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 my brother Michael introduced me to a soft rock or soft rock station here in Chicago, an FM station. And it blew my mind. I was introduced to the sounds of, of, of the Beatles and, you know, I'm talking, I'm talking white rock. And I was like, what is this? This sounds so good. <laughs> sounds so good, all this American music. And then I didn't realize that as I started writing songs, I was hearing those songs from, from 30 years prior. Uh, well, my first song was written in 1983, so I was hearing songs from just a few years back, not realizing that stuff was a part of me. Stevie, uh, you hear all kind of Stevie Wonder stuff in me, all right? But I, that was my journey. There you go, Kiros. And I, so when I hear how gospel music has progressed over time, I don't have a problem with it. It's just that you all have conformed to the whole look of the world. Everything you look like is the, the, the absolute parallel. Absolute parallel. Now, someone asked me a question about what do I... Uh, what are my thoughts about Maverick City? <sighs> Honestly, I can't take it. <laughs> I, 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 I can't take Maverick City. Why? It's not Maverick City that I got a problem with. My problem is with, I can't take too much praise and worship. <laughs> I just can't. It drives me crazy. Darius Bolton can, can attest to what, what I'm about to say. <clears throat> it's too circular. I said this earlier in the show. I can't do too much of it because it's just too simple and it doesn't challenge me. Uh -huh. It doesn't challenge me. It's just, it's the same old, same old. And it's like, I'm not challenged. There is black music has a variety to it. It has dips and troughs and hills and valleys, and it takes you places, different places, like a blockbuster movie does. Uh, uh, um, Forrest Gump was my favorite movie of all time. It's my, one of my it's top five. It's probably number two right now, outside of Shawshank Redemption. And I'll, I'll never forget sitting with my girlfriend at the movies when Forrest Gump came out and, and all it did was play, the orchestra played da 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 and, a, and, a, and this, this, this feather was coming out of the sky. That was just the opening and I'm here, I'm sitting there, my eyes started watering. It was, it was the most beautiful thing I had ever heard at, at, up until that time. And, my, my, and, and I'm trying to not let my girlfriend see me weep. 
<laughs> All right. Somebody cutting onions in here. <laughs> Papa didn't take no mess. I saw Papa cry. <laughs> I knew it was a lie. All right. And and I'm I'm crying. Because that music was taking me to a place. I should pull out my piano, y'all. I, I, I should pull out the piano. And it, it, it wasn't like praise and worship where it's just a circle. We had a we had a beginning and an interlude, an ending, uh, coming back to a, another place. We had a bridge. We had all kinds of stuff. Today's Maverick City music is a circle. <laughs> It's just a circle, and it's like a death spiral, like the death, the ants who do a death spiral. They go in a circle, and then they die because they got nowhere to go. <laughs> That's not black music. It's just not. <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm saying? So I, I, I just need, I need variety. I need variety. And Maverick don't do it for me. It don't, at least Kirk Franklin, at least he's got, energy to his music where he does go over here and then come over here. You don't know what he's going to do next. At least with him. I can stomach it. But I need variety. I need, when I go to a restaurant, I need variety. I want to see the appetizer meal uh, menu. And then I want a full course. And I want, I, I, me, I, I don't have a problem with mixing rice with potatoes. Y'all say, ain't that the same thing? It's all, it's all, it's all subjective to me. <laughs> I said, give, give, give me, give me some rice. Okay, what else you want? Uh, you got two more choices. Give me some potatoes, huh? You, are you sure? Yes. And then give me, give me some mashed potatoes and then give me some french fries, please. Huh? <laughs> I did that one time at the restaurant. The man, the man looked at me funny. He said, wait a minute, you, you, you said you want mashed potatoes and french fries? Yes. I'm paying. <laughs> the customer's always right. You don't tell me what my body want. <laughs> my body want potatoes in different forms <laughs> at the same desk table and put and, and sprinkle it with rice. <laughs> Come on now. They're still from the Caucasian style of yes. And that's why they have those people following them. Brown rice with potatoes or rice aroni, not white rice and baked potatoes. <laughs> now y'all messing with my menu. I like Kim, Will Downing, and Matt. Come on, come on, Barlo. I just went to see Kim. Kim opened up for Babyface. Yes, the preacher, elder or anointed Sir Walter, went to go see Babyface and Kim. And it was one of the greatest concerts ever. I too was up and down. Yeah, 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 yeah. You better say that, baby face. Why? Because I know the difference. <laughs> Is it okay to dance? Absolutely. Not nastiness, no. True. Yes, I dance. I used to dance with my daughter all the time. Watch me and my daughter. If a song come on in the house. I'm grabbing my daughter, and we are dancing around the house, and I dance better than her. I remember when Beyonce came on, and she was going to put a ring on it. Man, I had that mood, boy. I was doing it. <laughs> my, my daughter was cracking up, but she joined me. Yes, yeah, she did. Got no problems doing that stuff with the family. <laughs> Why? Because I know the difference. <laughs> but I'm not going to call something gospel. I'm just not gonna do it. I know the difference between what's on my plate. I'm just not gonna call a pea an an, an, an apple. That's a pea, not an apple. And when you go to the court of law, you got to, All right, let me stop, y'all. I gotta go. I way past my clock keeping time. I'm about ten minutes over, and I don't want to lose my job. What about William McDowell? Listen, Corey, I put him in the same bracket as Maverick. A lot of again, it's the it's not so much the artist as much as it is the, the the genre. Now there are some people in CCM that do diversify their music, yes, but mostly CCM must keep, uh, they must obey the rule. 
Soul music obeys the rule. Jazz music obeys the rule. CC music obey the rule. I'm not. A, I don't want to be a part of the rule. It's boring for me. <laughs> so what black folks had to do? They borrowed from the whites. That that's what CCM come from them. We borrowed and then we put some soul on it. We negroized it. And now when you hear it, it's us because you hear soul, you hear R and B, hip hop issue. You know you you hear our style, even though it's CCM. But you know, all black men did that. These are the days of Elijah. Something, something, something. <laughs> okay. Well, that was the white folks. But when Donnie McClurklin got it, he put us in it. <laughs> Why the clock keep a calling my phone? Hmm. Hmm. Why clock? Uh, let's see. Maverick City's outside extracurricular activities is their problem from. Release sex tapes, profanity, and throwing up the f bomb and photos at their wedding. What to their LGBT affiliations and stance in a little? Wow. Mm, I didn't know none of that. See, see, see. Maybe that's why. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's why I'm not. I'm not a big fan. <laughs> maybe, that's, maybe that's why I'm not a big fan. Oh, I just. I just felt dirty reading that. <laughs> Yuck. Now I got to go take another shower. Uh, Clarence McClendon, when he sang, I came to magnify the Lord, took it from Mark uh, Condell. Yes. Come on, Robbie. Give it to the black man. Oh, he'll change it. Antoine Cooks in Days of Eliza. Yeah, Timothy. Mm -hmm. uh, Bears Book says, why are people so mad about I think uh, if people wasn't trying to be seen or even accepted by others outside of God, they wouldn't care about what the Stella's up <laughs> to. I personally didn't care because I didn't watch it. I wasn't even going to do a show about the Stella's. I wasn't going to touch it. Until Ernest Pugh showed up. And then I just put it on my wall and I was done with it. I just put his statement on my wall. I was done. You all showed up and in Christian form, y'all acted a darn fool. <laughs> and so because y'all acted a darn fool, I said, well, Brother Jones, here's your show for Wednesday. Midday Connection. You got to let them know how you feel about it because some people actually trust your words even though they may not agree with you. They they trust you, think you know what you're talking about. So, y'all do what y'all do. I don't care. But when, when my bunkers get all riled up about this, I work for them. I work for the bunkers. The marriage bed is undefiled. The black church went in on Chandler at what he did at his wedding. That's his wedding, saints. Get on my... Oh, I don't know nothing about Chandler. I don't know nothing. It's a it's a big difference just listening to music like the majority of us and being able to create the music. Uh huh. The hearing may be very difficult. I don't know, Carol. You know you uh you've been dropping some serious wonderful nuggets today. I'm really I've been really enjoying your comments, and I don't even know what your belief is, but based off of that big Jesus picture right there. That might be a clue. <laughs> that might be a clue. Discernment is key. Come on, Corey Brookings. Always good to see you, brother. All right, y'all. I got to go and edit the last night's Book of Revelation. If you want to be a part of the Book of Revelation teachings we do every Tuesday night, free of charge, you sign up. I'm going to put the, the replay on YouTube as soon as I get off here. It's going to take a couple hours for it to upload. It'll be there for you all to watch tonight. Okay, and uh, uh, if you want to be a part of it, uh, come back around nine o'clock tonight. Then this, uh, and I'm gonna try and uh, feature it, and then you guys could uh, join the class if you want to. This coming Tuesday, we are in chapter one. Last night, cha uh, next Tuesday, we're in chapter two, three, and four. And boy, we had a great time. It was about 160 of y'all showed up. And man, that Zoom room was full of energy. We had a great time. 
Eve Travell and her husband even showed up. They sat side by side like they love each other. <laughs> it was great seeing them. <laughs> it was wonderful. Okay, so I'll see y'all tonight at 9. I won't be live. It'll be the pre-recorded from last night. So if you want to know anything about the book of Revelation, come back tonight at 9 o'clock. Uh, repeat of the teaching of last night, and then you can sign up for the course free of charge. All right, let me go. God, I thank you for your presence. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for these people who were here, those who gave to the cash app. Thank you for those who have always supporting the ministry. We're not always correct in our thought process. I, some things I have to correct, even some of my teachings, I'm not always right. But, oh, boy, I, I search for the truth, and I believe mostly <laughs> you have shown it to me. And those who disagree with me, and that's just the way life is, I think some of it is healthy, God, that we do sometimes disagree uh, so that we both can challenge one another and then search the scriptures to find the truth. And then when we all find the truth, then the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 2, and 3 talked about now we all supposed to be believing the same thing. How is it that we are divided in, into factions? And so help us, O oh God, to be more unified in our understanding of the scripture logistical things we're going to fight over that for a while because peter was, was separated uh from 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 paul and, and barnabas they went their separate ways not based off of that which is uh, theologically based but that which was logistically based but eventually they did come back together so i thank you god for those who did leave but they came back they here uh, and so that we can love each other in the beauty of holiness, and get to heaven together so that you can see us in peace. We can see you in peace. <laughs> we love you, and we give your name the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, if you're on YouTube, go ahead and hit the share, hit the bell notification, and bing! You know that we are live. Go ahead and hit that and subscribe to our channel. If 300 of y'all hit the thumbs up, that the gospel would be preached all over the world. By 300 of y'all hit it, bing, thumbs up, and watch how this gospel go all over the YouTube spheres. And YouTube will then share this show with everybody else. All right? It would be a relevant topic. I love you, Bunkers. Ain't nothing like you. Ain't nothing like the real thing, Bunkers. Ain't nothing like the real thing. Y'all are the real thing. See, Coke said they the real thing. No, no, you ain't. Because you changed the ingredients <laughs> in the 80s and talking about some new Coke. And the people hated it. They spit it out. <laughs> And you had to go back and change the ingredients back to the original Coke. That must have Coke the real thing. No, they <laughs> the bunkers. My family. They the real thing. <laughs> Gotta go take care of yourselves. See you tonight. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, good goodbye. 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 Enjoy yourself. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Good goodbye. 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 Well, goodbye. 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 Fellas, does it seem like you can't get a good woman? Ladies, wonder why you can't keep a man? Then read The Four Women That Men Desire, Volume 1, by Sir Walter Jones to figure out how to break the cycle. Go to Amazon.com to get your copy today. Sir Walter Jones Show. <laughs> Goodbye.